Continuing to look at aggregate expenditures, total spending in the economy, and we're breaking it down by looking at its components, C plus I plus G plus X minus IM. In previous videos, we looked at consumption spending and investment spending. Now we want to look at government spending. So you can see here our example, and we have national income, and we have government spending. Notice that when national income is zero, government spending is 160. As income increases, government spending doesn't change. So if we're to plot government spending, here we have national income on the horizontal and government spending on the vertical. When national income is zero, government spending is 160. When national income is 100, government spending is 160. And we can go all the way until national income is 800, government spending is still 160. So if we're drawing a line here, it should be a straight line. Hopefully your line is straighter than mine. And we can look at what is the formula for government spending. So just like the other formulas we've created so far, we're looking at autonomous plus induced spending. Well, the autonomous spending is 160. When income is zero, the government is spending $160. As income increases, government spending doesn't change. So there is no induced spending. Government spending is wholly autonomous, and the government spending in this example is equal to 160. When we're talking about government spending, the reason that it's autonomous is that governments can have a budget deficit or a budget surplus. So sometimes they spend more than they bring in in tax revenue and sometimes less. So let's also look at this column here on net taxes. So notice that when national income is zero, net taxes are 60. When income is 100, net taxes are 80. And we can keep plotting these net taxes all the way until national income is 800. And net taxes are 220. So let's connect those dots. Hopefully your lines are a little straighter than mine. So we should be able to connect those dots. This is where a straight edge or a ruler comes in handy. And we should be able to find a formula for taxes. So taxes are both autonomous and induced. In this example, when income is zero, our net taxes are 60. So there are taxes we pay that we would pay even if we had no income. For example, if our city or province ha or state had highway tolls, uh, we have user fees. So if you think about when you're camping in a provincial uh, park or state park, uh, you have to pay to use those sites. Even if your income is zero, you still have to pay them. So there are taxes that we pay, including property tax, we would pay even if we had no income. We also know that as our income increases, we pay more taxes, particularly income tax. The question is, is as our income increases, how much extra do we pay in taxes? So we need to find the slope of that tax line. So we're looking at the change in taxes divided by the change in income. Well, taxes go from 60 to 220. So 220 minus 60. And our income goes from 0 to 800. So we do 800 minus 0. If we take 220 minus 60, we get 160. And 800 minus 0 is 800. So our slope here is 0.2. This 0.2 has a name. It is the marginal tax rate. It says for every additional dollar of income, 
20 cents is going to taxes. So we have our formula now for net taxes and we have our formula for government spending. If we look at it on a graph, notice that at low levels of income, like at an income of 200, our government spending is more than our net taxes. If the government spends more than it brings in in tax revenue, we have a budget deficit. As the income in our economy increases, we pay more in tax revenue, but government spending doesn't depend on income, so at some point our government spending is less than our tax revenue and we have a surplus. So at high levels of income we tend to have budget surpluses, at low levels of income we have budget deficits. This should make sense because when the economy shrinks, contracts, we're during a recession, then we tend to run budget deficits. When the economy is booming, then the government is more likely to have a surplus. Now we said this government spending is autonomous. It is possible for the government to choose to spend more or to spend less. And this will, of course, impact their deficit or surplus. A government can decide to spend more if they're trying to stimulate the economy. They can do this at low levels of income or high levels of income. So we're shifting the whole graph up. The government can also decide to spend less. Maybe they're trying to slow the economy down, or maybe they're simply prioritizing paying off the debt. If the government is prioritizing paying down the debt, then that means they're not buying goods and services like police cars and building new hospitals, in which case the government spending would shift down. 